Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a watercolor card and I'm going to be using the stamps from the Simon Says Stamp uh, the Halloween kit that they came out with, the limited edition Halloween kit. And I'm just going to start by stamping my images down onto some Canson watercolor paper using black pigment ink. And then I'm going to heat set that with a uh, fine detail black embossing powder. I'm also going to make a mask just for my little pumpkin there because my tree, the spooky tree, um, is going to kind of go over my pumpkin and I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to just make a little mask using a scrap piece of paper. And then I just cut out the part where it touches. And I'm going to ink up the big tree. And do it a couple of times because my ink pad is terrible. Although it does get ink everywhere but on my paper here. So once I'm done with all that, I'm going to pull out my watercolors. And I got these um, recently at Michael's. Just the little GP Artist Loft stuff. But it's uh, really fun to do the backgrounds with this. Um, I really, the, the colors are a lot brighter than I thought they would be. And um, I actually had to tone down the green with some gray at the end because it was supposed to be kind of like a spooky nighttime sky and the, the grass was a little too bright. But it didn't matter because it all worked out at the end. Um, for this background, uh, I do use my heat tool to, if I don't want things to run into each other, I'll use the heat tool to dry um, a part of it and then continue on with the next color. Or, um, like I do with my zig markers, you'll see later in the video, I'll move on to something else while it dries and then I'll come back to it. Um, after it's dried and finished. So I'm um, just going to put on some music and this background doesn't take very long to do and then I will catch you back here when I get to the actual coloring of the, the image. So almost finished with the background. Um, the only, there's the gray on the grass. The only thing I do off camera that you don't see is I take the white that is in that same paint set and I just splattered it across the entire image to kind of give it kind of like that starry sky look. And I put all the colors of the markers up in the top corner so that you can see if, if any of these color combinations, um, if you like them, they're there. The tree uh, is pretty easy, um, other than the little tiny little spots in the branches. And I just start with my base color, which is my lightest color, and I lay it down kind of towards the middle of everything, and then I pull the color out to the ends, just so that the middle is darker and the ends are a little bit lighter. But honestly, with watercolor, it just does whatever it wants to do. 
no matter whether you want it to or not. So sometimes you just kind of got to let it go. So then I added my, my darker color and I just kind of used the artist's lines to darken up just that area and then I pulled it around um, with the watercolor marker, it, I mean the water brush. And I still didn't really like how it wasn't dark enough. So you can't see it because I zoomed in on the image, but off to the side, I took that dark brown uh, zig marker and I kind of scribbled it on the little white part of the glass mat and then I'm just gonna grab it with my water marker and come back. So every time I put my hand off to the side, I'm grabbing that darkest color and bringing it back. And you can see I'm a very messy color. When I play with the watercolors, it gets everywhere, which is why I like to use the embossing powder on it. Um, it just kind of holds my mess a little bit better. For the fence behind there, I put the color up at the top, it was brown, and I'm just, Putting the color down wherever the artist put, you know, where there would be lines or some, some kind of dark spots. And then I'm just pulling it out with the water brush. And I almost forgot that there was a little piece of fence behind the behind my pumpkin there. Uh, let's see, next I'm going to, I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to keep going. The colors are up on the top and just there it is. So for Christmas this year... My granddaughter is in California and I'm in Idaho. So I, I kind of came up with an idea for her because she's, you know, she's young. And I think creativity is something that everybody should uh, foster. I think everybody should have somebody in their life that's inspiring them to do, you know, creative things. So I've decided to make her a box of, um, stuff that we are going to put together together. Even though she's real far away, um, I'm going to make a video that's just for her. It'll be, you know, you can do that. If you make a YouTube video for someone, you can make it so only they can access it. And so I'm going to make one for her where I'm talking directly to her and I'm going to have the same exact box of stuff on my side and then we are going to hopefully, I've set this up with her mom, be able to craft together using that box of stuff that I sent to her. So I am going to do a video showing you what's in the box so you can see like what kind of things would be kind of fun to be able to do with the kids um, for this Christmas. And I am going to send it to her early so that she can make, basically it's going to be tags and cards and gift bags and stuff for her f friends and family uh, back home. So I'll put that video up later. Um, I just thought I'd throw that out there while I'm coloring in my pumpkin now. And you can see here where I said uh, I come back to it later. I did the orange and then I went on and did the hat. And then I came back and did the scarlet red on the on the pumpkin. And then came back to the hat again and did the other purple. So I just kind of go back and forth when I don't want them to, when I don't want the color to move too quickly. So I want the color to move when I tell it to move. I don't want it to move on its own. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you play around with your zig markers, you'll you probably understand what I'm talking about. That if you put a, the marker down and the paper is too wet, just like any other watercolor, it's just going to take off across the page. And then you're sopping up your mess trying to fix it later. So instead of that, I just come back to it. And that way I have a little bit more control over where the color goes while I'm doing my other thing. So I'm almost done with this. Part. This is a part of the 5 and 5, by the way. This is one of the cards from the 5 and 5, but since I haven't put up a coloring video in a very long time, I thought I would just throw this one up here um, separate from the 5 and 5 video. But this is um, one of the 5 cards that I do for the Simon Says Stamp um, limited edition Halloween kit. So here's the image all finished, ready to go. And I just take my card base, which I use, that's from the kit. Uh, it's the green from the kit, which you're, you're not even going to see it. And then I'm trying to figure out which die I want to use to cut a frame from my image. So I, I opted for that one. And I had put a little moon up there that's also a stamp in the kit. And I used the uh, Distress Oxide inks. I used two or three different colors just to try to find. And I hate it. 
so I thought that's probably the best place to cut my frame. It's right down that moon, so you, hopefully it's not as noticeable. So I'm going to mount the picture on the back, very thin black frame around the, the watercolor image. So I'm just going to use my pencil, mark it off, and then I'll cut it with my trimmer. Um, can't use a die for this because all the dies, they, live, they leave too much space, so you just have to do this by hand. Once I've done that, I'm just going to attach it to the little frame, the black frame. Try to get it as evenly as possible. Now this is going to cover the entire card base, so you won't see the green ring around um, the, the card on the front like I usually do. And I didn't leave a place for a sentiment on here because I did that on the inside. And unfortunately, I did not film that part. But I did put um, some black cardstock on the inside and I heat embossed the sentiment on the inside. Just because I think that these, when you put that much work into the, into the picture on the front, um, the sentiment just kind of takes away from your, from your image, I think. So now I've got my frame, and I'm just going to put it as evenly as I can on my card base. And I just stuck it on there with some score tape. And then I had popped up the watercolor image, and, the, and I'm going to pop that right in the middle. And it just gives it a little bit of dimension, and it gives it that nice little... Um, border, black border around it. And that's the completed card. And like I said, the sentiment went on the inside. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Um, stay tuned for the rest of the five and five, and I will see you again real, real soon. Bye-bye.